This will be my long-term review of the Viver 10x10 gazebo tent. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, this is going to be a relatively short video because all the details on this tent, as far as specifications, setup, and that type of thing, will be in the original introductory uh, video I did before bringing it out camping. Now, I refer to this as a long-term use review. Well, the truth is that Gina and I have been using this now for two weeks at Kuzbequak now. National Park and we're just coming to the end of our vacation here so it's been set up here for two weeks that's how long it's been it hasn't been multiple years but I think I've got enough experience with it now that I can give you my thoughts on it all right let's get started all right what I thought I'd do is take the camera off of the tripod and take a little walk around the gazebo so that you can see uh, just the way we've got it set up here and a few of the options that are available to you and what we've been using in the setup but first thing I want to do is just give you an idea idea of where we are. So this is my campsite. Now underneath this huge white tarp, actually let me just back up and show you that, is our camping tent. We've been using this for a number of years. I actually did a review on this a few years ago. It is the Cabela's Getaway Cabin 6. Now it is, I don't think any longer made, but I think there may be a replacement for it from Cabela's. But what we've done is, and this is just based on 20 years of camping here, this is a huge white poly tarp that I have stretched over the top and it's for a couple of reasons one it does protect the tent itself but it's more about giving us this extra large living space inside of here right in front of the tent and provide some shade to the tent as well I have a guy line going between trees up there I think that's showing up on it so that's what we've got set up here and the reason we find that I wouldn't call it necessary, but the reason we like doing this is because while the weather is beautiful here, when it does rain, it really rains. We can get some severe thunderstorms, and we had two of those in the two weeks that we've been camping here, and that plays into my review of the gazebo. So let me come over here, and I'm sure you're going to want to know about this because it's a set out. This is my Bluetti 200 watt power pan or solar panel, and behind it I have the AC60, I believe it is. I actually brought two power banks or power stations with me to power a, a 12 volt fridge but that'll be a separate review so all right so let's focus in on the gazebo so we have all the side panels installed but we've kind of some of them are up just to provide ventilation so you can see rolled up here at the top is the door panels they've worked out very well so we got those open for the ventilation we have the side panels installed but you can see where we have to kind of just drop them down to allow more ventilation into the gazebo slash tent we just call it a screen house now this one we did just the opposite we have the ventilation at the bottom and then the panels are kind of making use of the velcro at the top and that's the same way the rest of the way around the tent all right so a couple of thoughts as we go around here and uh, one of the things we wanted to know is well we just got rid of a tent of our own a big screen house of our own it had served its years uh, served it you know for a number of years and finally it was deteriorating to the point that if Viver had not sent me this for review we would have had to purchase one in fact this is the style I was looking for at is one of these clamshell pullout style self-structuring yes I did use those long metal uh, nail types tent stakes to put this down into the ground they've turned out to be quite a good investment I also use them for the tent for that matter because they're really holding everything in well but let me just go inside of the tent okay first off comments on the outside uh, it's standing up well there's the wind is not affecting this at all even when the panels are closed up and it does get windy during the thunderstorms we've had no issue with the panels coming off uh, we have not had to put the pull the tie downs there's extra tie downs you can take from the four, this different side on this we haven't needed to the nails have been good enough to hold this into the ground but let me just get inside of the tent I'll show you the use inside all right here we go We're inside now oh it's warm in here and first thing that we notice right away is the ceiling being that light white color transmits a great amount of light into our living space in here and that's truly appreciated but it doesn't matter how much ventilation you put in this tent it still gets hot when it's in direct sunlight like it is right now now as far as setup goes inside you can see there is my Coleman stove with gas tank a folding table 
with uh, some uh, of our cooking implements or oh, some supplies in here. Now, one of the first things we noticed is that there was a smaller inside space than we were used to with the other screen tent that we had. Not just smaller in terms of dimensions, but smaller in terms of usable space. Because what happens is with this octagon shape is that it just, uh, you don't get to use it large. Now, it's worked out okay, as you can see, that pretty much fits that space. That pretty much fits this space. Now, plenty of space. I'm just saying it is smaller than what we were used to because what we would do is if it was a severe rainstorm and it was extended, we'd actually bring our chairs and sit in here during the rainstorm just to kind of, well, you know, the food and everything would be in here so we'd be okay now. Now, the one thing that is seems to, and I'm not going to call this a con, but something that you need to be aware of. And my friend Wade at Woods Walker, uh, alerted to me to this and that is he purchased one of these and he asked me if I had experienced any leaking with it and at that point we had not had any good rains to really give it a test well we have had some, those rains since and I don't know I should ask Wade and I will ask Wade where he experienced the leaking because my thinking was this thin nylon material up here may have been where the leaks came through but the seams are actually taped and I'm not getting any leaks through there or at the, all along all of those seams, no leaks. Here is where we did get a little bit of leaking. This panel right here at this seam, where the roof meets the side panel, there would not, and I'm not gonna call it leaks, not like river outlets, but water would build up on the inside of this seam and eventually drip down, of course, what's right below it, but of course the table. And it was either this, yes, it was this panel here. So only these two panels, did we have any leaking along this seam right here? Now, when I get it home, I'm gonna set it up and I am gonna seam seal it. So I, I actually I'll seam seal all the sides at that point. But those are the only leaks that we experienced with this tent. Now, there are a few other things to comment on here at all. Uh, everything else I think was in the original review, my comments on it. We've had no failures whatsoever. We have had no disappointments. In fact, Gina absolutely loves using this tent inside here hot in here right now. Of course, it is 32 degrees Celsius on the outside. You can only imagine what it is in, inside here. All right, I think that's enough. Let's wrap this video up. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Viver 10x10 screen house gazebo, whatever else you want to call it. Um, this is probably, haven't used it now, and this is based on my experience for the last two weeks. If Viver had not sent this to me, we would have purchased it, knowing that now. At the time, I wasn't so sure because there is a competitor which is almost identical in every way, which costs twice as much as this. And I'll leave that unnamed. I'm sure if you are into these type of screen houses, you already know who that is. But the thing was, is if there's, this was selling at half the price, does that mean it was half the quality? Well, I don't have the other one to compare it with, but I can tell you that we are very happy with this unit. It has worked out very well for us, and I see no reason why it would deteriorate over time. I mean, everything does over a long period of time, especially when you're exposed to UV light and hot heats like this. I'm sure it won't last all that many years, maybe 10, 15 years. Hard to say, our other one lasted 15, so uh, I'll consider if this one lasts 15 with that kind of usage, I'd be happy with it. But so far, no complaints other than that leaking along those seams. The setup has been extremely easy. All right, with one caveat, and this was in the original video, the challenge I had with pushing the ceiling up. That still exists, that hasn't changed, but I learned from experience that if you nail down the corners all the way around with a good sized tent stake, then it gets much easier to push the roof up. So yeah, the quality is there, the value is definitely there. I would recommend this to anyone who is looking for one of these. And if you're wondering if you need the bigger 12 by 12, well, we had a larger one, we didn't accommodate or change our usage a little bit, but we're perfectly happy with the 10 by 10. And it's just a little less expensive or a little less costly, we'll say, in the way you want to look at it, and a little smaller and lighter to pack as well. So that's something else to think of. Now, the only thing I haven't mentioned was transport of this, because if you look at that other video, you'll know this package is down into something that is about six and a half feet long, the package itself. It's just the way that this structure is put together. It won't go any smaller. I was not getting that inside of my uh, Kashkai, Nissan Kashkai, or Rogue Sport for those of you in the US. 
but what I did is I was able to strap it to the roof racks, no problem at all, and it was just fine. So uh, that was the only issue that you may want to consider is how you're going to transport this. So having said that, if you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. I'll be putting the link to my original review video with all the extra information you want to know about it, size, weight, setup, and all that type of thing. That'll be in the video description and linked at the end of this video. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.